What's up guys, this is Teddy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This video, we're going to be talking about one of the most foundational structures in computer programming. Every single type of programming language is going to have this data structure. And yes, we're even going to get kind of like into the wonderful, the wonderful world of algorithms and data structures on this course. Going to make it very real world, going to make it very low level going to try and teach you guys some of like what's going on underneath things and hopefully get you to the point where you're not just understand you, you you're not just looking at an array and just kind of saying oh that's an array i want you to look at it an array and be like i know what is going on underneath the hood with this thing like i know arrays inside and out and i know like what's actually going on with the compiler so it's so again for a beginner course don't be scared. It's going to be very real world. It's going to be very, um, you know, I'm not going to be using big words and we're just going to go ahead and get into this thing. So if you're watching this, most people I've looked at my analytics, most people here, you know, are going to know what Pokemon is. Like I've looked at my demographics. So when you're playing Pokemon, when you are, uh, you know, going through Saffron City or whatever, or you're picking your Pokemon, you pick your Pokemon based on, like, a certain trait that it has. And I always used to pick Squirtle when I was, uh, I just liked, I just like Squirtle a lot. I don't know, like, what was it about Squirtle? But when you have a Pokemon like Squirtle, Squirtle is very good at uh, killing rock Pokemon. <laughs> it's bad as <that> sounds. <laughs> Water Pokemon are really good at hurting the rock Pokemon. And data structures in programming are kind of the same thing. Like certain data structures are good for certain things. And you kind of need to be aware what type of data structure is good for certain types of things. And what type of data structures are not good for certain things. And if I could distill like what an array is into one sentence... An array is good when you know what the values are and you can just quickly pull out the values. An array is not good if you have a big collection of values. Um, an array is good for things like, say for instance, you had a drop-down menu and you knew all of the elements in the drop-down menu and you just needed to quickly iterate over them and you needed to display them in a quick way. It's really good for... Uh, quick access when you know where the data is at and a really good analogy for an array is a park bench like let's say you have five people on a park bench these five people are in contiguous spots in memory in other data structures the memory where the uh, actual data pieces are stored are stored all over in memory but with an array the memory is stored right next to each other. And if you know, if you've been exposed to any type of programming, you know an array is literally just a collection of values, but most people don't know the reasons we use arrays or what their actual case is, or kind of like their Pokemon, you know, like what's their real strength? Why, why do we even have arrays? And another misconception is that you're going to be using arrays a lot in your development. You do use arrays, but if I had to say there's other far more common data types, and not to say that you shouldn't learn arrays, arrays are definitely, I think really the most important concept and what most people miss kind of like when they're learning arrays is why you're using arrays and what arrays are good for. And I hope I demonstrated that uh, clearly for you and at least, you know, kind of got you in the right direction and kind of hopefully solidified that uh, a little bit better. So we're just going to go ahead and clear this out. I deleted, we're back in our Hello World tutorial project here. And I'm just going to go ahead and clear this out. I'm going to clear out, um, you know, what a stack is or what, what the stack is that's left over from previous. And we'll just go ahead and array a collection of fixed sets of values and I didn't even look at that that's literally just top of my head because I am a genius no I'm just kidding 
that's probably let's get let me see here let's get the textbook definition um Let me see here. I'm just going to pull it out. So arrays, this is the actual textbook definition. Just go ahead and pasted that. Arrays are used to store multiple values in a single variable instead of declaring separate value variables for each type. So literally just a collection of values. So what does an array even like? How do you actually create an array? What does it even look like? In C sharp, you have to declare what you are going to put in your array. In Python, you can literally just say variable. You see, it's not even going to let you do it. So you'd say like variable, then you would have, you know, your variables in, in here. You can literally put whatever you want into it. You can, and JavaScript is exactly the same. So you can do this. You can just like literally put like whatever you want to in it. You can put like object and it's going to work. But in C sharp, like I said, C sharp is a more picky language. It's going to be more strict. You can't do that. You have to be more explicit about what you want. You can't just implicitly assume that the c compiler is going to do everything for you. So remember those two, I talked about those two terms in uh, a previous video. Implicit means the compiler is going to do the work for you. Explicit means you have to do the work because the compiler is not going to actually know what to do. So in C sharp and in a lot of other languages, you have a fixed array and then you have a dynamic array and a fixed array is even faster. It's even more strict, but it's faster and it's you. I think at the end of the day, though, you really don't even have to worry about those things with computing speed. A fixed array is faster, but a dynamic array is probably what you're more likely going to see in a professional environment. You probably want to know the difference between them, though, because it's going to help solidify the knowledge of uh, arrays even deeper. And once you learn this, you could even go to other languages and most people in Python and JavaScript aren't going to know the difference between a fixed and a dynamic array or how those even work. And you will know that, and that's going to make you a lot better developer. So let's just go ahead and declare a fixed array here. The most simple that we could possibly do int array When I can't see my keyboard here and we will go ahead and declare our first array. I don't know why the IntelliSense named it VS, but I don't know. Let's just go with it. I'm not even going to change it. So this is a fixed array. What's going on here? I will go ahead and just kind of zoom it in here, break it down a little bit more. So trick question. Is an array a reference type or is an array a value type? An array is actually a reference type. An array is going to be stored on the heap. If you don't know what the heap is, uh, go ahead, check out my other video. You could still continue on and not know what the stack or the heap is, but I think it's kind of important to know the difference because you want to, you want to know what's going on underneath the hood. So in this instance, we are stored. It is a reference value. This value is being stored on the heap, but within our values here, let's go ahead, console right line, go ahead, just toss our array into this console, set our debugger. If you don't know uh, how to use a debugger, what you do, you go into here, and this is what's gonna allow us to actually kind of see quote unquote what's going on in this array and i'll show you guys exactly what's going what's going to happen yeah and you could do this with any, any data structure and i always recommend if you don't know what's going on and you kind of want to see what's going on with these values go ahead set this red uh put this red dot right here run it make sure that you are in debug you're in debug mode which it is by default and then use this little thing right here which I'll talk about late as we get progress and we get kind of more into uh, other more complicated parts. I'll teach you how to use these other buttons, but 
go ahead and just use this step over button right here and we're going to go ahead and step over and see what's inside of our array here so we've went in and we declared a value and we have an int and it's declared two zeros here if you come from another language what you might thought would have been happening is that this two we're going to actually put like a two into our an array but that's not the case with C-sharp. C-sharp is a little bit different. What this actually means is that we are creating an array with two places that we can put data into later. So it's not putting a two in there. What it's doing is it's creating a fixed, remember I was talking about fixed versus dynamic. There's fixed arrays and then there are dynamic arrays. And what happened there is we just created a fixed array, which is going to be more performant but in the context of modern software development, you could probably just use a dynamic array because especially in C-sharp development, we're not gonna be worried too much about speed. There could be certain scenarios where you need to use a fixed array and you need the speed, but for most people who are watching this course, um, a dynamic is gonna be perfect, especially for a personal project too. Unless you're working at Google, speed at that point is probably not gonna you know, be much of an issue for you. Just remember what an array is good for, like I talked about in the beginning, and what a, an array is not good for. So we've got two values here. When you declare an array with an int, remember you have to declare, you have to specify in C sharp what you are going to put into this array. You just can't put whatever you want to in whatever type of data structure. You need to be specific. So if you Maybe you're just coming in here from another video and I'll just kind of explain this for more iteration of like what's actually like going on in each specific point. So this right here, this is not actually being, this is not being stored in memory. This isn't any type of memory storage. What this part is right here is you're saying this is an int or this is an array of ints. This is going to be an array of integers. This is going to be the actual place where you say, hey, if I, this is going to be the computer's way of saying, hey, if you want this array and you want to do something with this, um, I'm going to store this value. And because it's a reference type, it's going to be stored on the heap. And if you want this value, this is where you have to get it. This is the actual part that's going to create the actual, this is going to say, it's like you telling the waiter, hey, I want my uh, eggs over easy and I want them like this. And that's what's going to actually create, you know, the eggs or whatever your meal. This is like the actual, it's called newing up. It's uh, you're creating an instance. And because uh, variable or arrays are actual reference types, you have to new, you have to new it up. So kind of like a slang term. I don't really know like where exactly it seems, but you're creating an object. You're not creating a value type. If you don't know what a value type is, make sure to watch my other, uh, my stack versus heap video. You're creating a reference type and that reference type is being stored on the heap. So just keep that in mind. Um, let's just say we're going to store a very common scenario. We're going to say, we're going to create a uh, an array of strings. Trick question. <laughs> can you store whatever you want to in a array? Yes, you can. You can store, you could store an array of objects. You could literally store any type of data. You could store an array of chars. You could store anything. One trick, and this is like, I'm just trying to sort of show you like I said, like a more in-depth understanding of arrays, but another trick that you could do is you could do this, and I would never do that, never do this in a pr production environment. You, if I actually did something similar to this one time, and I got a very, not harsh treatment, but I got the treatment of, it's okay that you did it this one time, but if you ever do this again, you know, we're gonna have problems. But, but basically what I did was I declared an object of uh, a certain type and I just used the word object. We're gonna kind of get into uh, another very real world thing. So object at everything 
in C sharp, you could make the argument comes from this word right here. That's how powerful it is. That's how much of a big deal that this word is. If you use this word right here, you could literally put anything that you want to in this array. But like I said, that's one of the reasons why we use C sharp is because we're, you know, we want to be strict. And if you're using things like this, you could in theory, put anything that you want to in there, but it's very dangerous. Lots of things in there could be going in there that you don't want in there. And if you use that word willy nilly, or if you use this object type willy nilly, you're, you probably, no, I don't think anybody's going to fire you, but you don't want to be doing that. And like I said, you could run into problems, but let's go ahead. Let's run this. Let's set our debugger here and let's go ahead and see like what's actually going on. And let's take a look at this thing. So in this case, when we declared this variable or when we declared this array, it initialized zeros for us. So let's like, let's like watch what happens when we declare this string. When we declare the string, what is that? Why is there nulls in there? Interesting question. If you know the answer to this, please drop a comment down below because show people how smart you are. Because if you know the answer to this and you're watching this beginner course, you, you're probably going places. But if you're, if you don't, I'm going to go ahead and explain it to you. So a string, is a reference type when you initialize an array as when you initialize an array as a string instead of zeros because a string is an object it's a reference type it's going to be null isn't that isn't that cool i think that's awesome i think that's cool so we'll go down here we'll go ahead and see the object obviously an object is a reference type you can literally put anything in there it's got to be a reference type it initializes four null values. So there's no, when you initialize an array in this fashion, you're not actually putting anything in there. You're literally just creating the memory so that you can put things in there later. And we'll go ahead and I'll show you guys how you can actually put stuff into the actual array. So let's turn off our debugger here and we're going to go ahead and we're going to take our VS, uh, we're gonna take our VS and let's go ahead and let's toss in a, um, let's just put a, let's see here. We'll go ahead. We'll go to the very first place in memory and a one. So in an array, this is a very, very important thing. Arrays are zero based index. What does that mean? In this scenario, when you were using, this is called bracket notation. You could also do, um, I don't know if you could do dot notation. Let's not do dot notation. But uh, br with bracket notation, this is actually how you could put in a variable. And this is how you manipulate arrays. So we just got done creating array. Like I said, crud, think crud. Like how are we going to create an array? How are we going to update and delete? And how are we actually going to manipulate this array? We want to be able to manipulate it because if we can't manipulate it, what is it even good for? So first things first, back to the zero based index. In programming, if you want to manipulate the very first part of this array, you don't put, a, intuitively you would think, I'm just gonna put a one here and I'm going to actually manipulate the one, but watch what happens. Go ahead, run it go through it. We're going to go down here. We just created it. And the one that we're, we're we don't even need to uh, worry about these ones right here. We're not actually touching these, but you, if you want to manipulate the very first value, let's say we want to manipulate the very first value. Then we go to our array here. We put in that. Well, I thought we were going to put in one at the very first spot, but that's not how ar arrays work. They're zero based. Meaning that if you want to access that very first value, you want to put an actual one where that zero is at and you want to be able to, you know, in sequence or put in specific uh, integers at specific places, you have to use the zero if you want to actually manipulate the very first index. So we'll go through here. We'll go ahead and change that because we don't want to manipulate the second spot. We want to manipulate the first spot. 
we'll go through here we'll go ahead save it turn on the debugger so we can actually kind of see what's actually going on in the array then we'll go to let's see if it actually manipulated the the, the real spot that we wanted and yes that's how you actually that's how you manipulate the very first spot of the array you it with zero base index that's a very very important concept it's zero based. If you want to manipulate the first spot, you have to you have to do it as a zero based index. Otherwise, you're going to get confused and you're going to be trying to put a one in here and it's not going to work out. And you're going to be wondering like, well, you know, I want to put a two at this specific spot and it's not going to work for you. So that is going to be fixed uh, arrays. But more likely what we're really going to see in a real environment is we're going to see dynamic arrays and they're not quite as dynamic as you know willy-nilly you can do whatever you want to as python or javascript there's still more strictness to them and it's kind of by design so we'll go ahead and i'll show you guys what a dynamic array looks like and this is once again this is very important because this is more likely what you're going to see you know kind of like in a quote-unquote real environment <laughs> so we're, we go ahead we create our int here and then what we do here is we actually uh put in our values that we want to so let's say one two three four five six seven eight nine yeah we'll just we'll just go to five make sure you put your semicolon because you have to have semicolons this is actually going to your IntelliSense is going to do a lot of the work for you because IntelliSense, even as I have, I've only been programming for like, I don't know, maybe three and a half years. And the IntelliSense, even in my short period as a programmer, has just increased insanely. It's, it's amazing. It's awesome. So we'll go ahead here. We've declared our dynamic array. We're going to go down. We're going to see what it looks like. And... Oh, sweet. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? It does all of the work for us. We don't have to actually declare like a fixed uh, size. And we can go ahead and we can initialize. We can create our array and have all of these values in it. And we don't have to worry about, you know, kind of coming down here and manipulating our array. So static int array. You could, but down here, we, you know, we don't have to actually worry about it. And we can actually just initialize all those values and boom, we are good to go. So we've already covered accessing array. You could also go through here. You know, you could change the arrays however you want to. You can manipulate them in whatever fashion. But one of the most important things I would say is when you are in a programming environment, you are going to be tasked with all different types of strange scenarios where you need to manipulate uh, arrays in different ways and you need to do certain things. I had one, like I had to create an algorithm where you would have to pick certain words and if in a certain scenario, you know, you needed to do like a, you needed to have a word here in a certain scenario, like this word needed to be capitalized and in those situations, what you're probably going to be using is a very, very powerful framework called link, or you would use the, this right here. I don't even know like what this is called. Basically you have your array, you have a dot, and then you have some type of way that you can, you can actually manipulate it right here. So let's just go for an example. Let me see here. An example with link would be we take our static let's go ahead and get rid of this so static int array dot and then once you have that you have all of these right here so before you go into super algorithm mode and you start wanting to th I, I, if you want to like if you already know the algorithm and you really want to show your employer how smart you are you might as well go for it but in a lot of cases you just have um, link expressions right here. And then 
it will immediately manipulate it for you and you don't have to worry about algorithms. And that's kind of like one of the beauties of C Sharp is that you have this very powerful, uh, you have all these powerful extension methods. Like most of the time, um, you're not going to need to know any type of special algorithms and you can just literally just type in right here, be like, hey, like, I don't know. Like maybe you need to find the average or maybe you need to do some type of thing. And then C sharp is going to have all of these very powerful um, ways of sorting your data. You can get the min, you can get the max, you can skip, you can do, you know, turn it into different. You could turn it into a dictionary. You can turn it into a hash set. You can turn it into a string. Um, you can do all of these crazy types of things and you don't need to know algorithms. And you don't really need to know, um, any type of really sophisticated programming. It will just immediately do it for you. And a lot of these tools, like I said, you're standing on the shoulder when you're programming, you're standing on the shoulders of giants. So the next thing is that with each data type in programming, whatever you want to manipulate a data type, this is a special little trick. You just type in like array and it will have a static method like, uh, this is let me just show you what you can do is you can right click here you can go to definition and then oh my gosh look at all that those are all these crazy little hacks and tricks look you have a binary search you can do a binary search on an array lickety split you don't have to actually even know what a binary search is you don't have to study any of that and it will automatically do all of these things for you based on this array and i'll show you exactly what i did here so what I did, I clicked, I went to go to definition and you could see all of these options. It's almost like going up into your toolbar and going, you know, searching for properties or whatever, but you're doing it in a, you know, environment. So in this case, I didn't even know there was sort, like I didn't know that you could actually just sort stuff like that and just go and sort type in static array, literally doing this on the fly. I had no any idea this existed. We'll go ahead, set our breakpoint, set our little red button right here. Go ahead, run it, let's see what happens. Hopefully it'll sort it. I don't even know what's gonna happen. Sweet, <laughs> it's, it's very good, very powerful, very cool. And make sure to use those. Don't try and, re don't try and reinvent the wheel. Do I guess if you're really curious, I don't want to hurt your curiosity and I don't want you to prevent yourself, you know, from trying to learn a binary search or trying to learn some type of cool search. But before you try and re reinvent the wheel, make sure that you are understanding that there's probably some type of cool, let's go ahead and see what happens here with average. So this is, an, it, the difference between this, this is a static, if you wanna know like exactly what this is, this is a static method. This is an extension method. Let's go ahead and see Yep, this is link. I don't actually know what link stands for, but just remember link is a very powerful set of extension methods that Microsoft has for you to use. And an array is just, and this thing is just literally part of the system. It's a, it's a static class that you can put into the actual method and will do all those calculations for you. So once again, don't try and reinvent the wheel. Don't even use a for loop. If you don't even have to use a for loop, don't use a for loop and literally just use the tools that Microsoft's, Microsoft gives you. And like I said, don't reinvent the wheel. So that's going to be my lesson for today. Hope that it was very informative. Hope that it was very real world. I hope that you learned a lot. If you did, make sure to hit that like button. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.